Let's get it. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It is Wednesday evening and it was quite a day today. As expected, we shattered a record high. We had lots of wind, lots of sunshine as well. And it's uh, turning out to be just a remarkable month of February and probably a remarkable winter as well when we add up all the numbers coming up in just a couple of weeks. Not counting today's numbers, just through the first half of February, the first through the 14th, the average temperature at the airport, count, counting highs and lows, 34.1 degrees. That's good for a tie for eight, the eighth warmest first two weeks of February on record. You know, I, I've mentioned this a couple of times in recent videos. We'll do all the math and all the numbers at the end of the month, but we're going to end up with one of the warmest winters on average, meteorological winters. Um, and given how the trends look during the second half of February, probably not as warm as it has been, but still not that cold, I would expect us to have one of the warmest Februarys on record when all is said and done as well. Today's numbers, so we had 70 in the forecast. We felt just one shy of that this afternoon, but the old record didn't stand a chance. That record 65 set in 1954. Minus 8, the record low. That's a recent record low, and it was also on today's date that, uh, we'll talk about this momentarily, we set the mark for the coldest high temperature on a calendar day in February history. So it's been a remarkable uh, stretch for February the 15th in the last decade. So all these numbers, with the exception of Toledo and Detroit, and I'm not sure about Columbus. I didn't check on Columbus. But the rest of these numbers are all records today. We set records Cleveland, Akron, New Philly, Zanesville, Wheeling, Pittsburgh, Dubois, and Erie, as well as here in the Youngstown area. All right, it was 2015. It was eight years ago that I mentioned the record low, but the maximum temperature that day was two above zero. That is good for the coldest high temperature on any calendar date in the month of February. That was, of course, uh, towards the tail end of a pretty tough winter and the last pretty tough winter we had, the winter of 2014-2015. We had back-to-back -back pretty tough winters, 13, 14, 14, 15. Ever since then, boy, winter's been on kind of a hiatus. We've had, you know, our fair share of snowstorms and things like that. And 2017, 2018 was very close to average, but the last harsh, kind of memorable winter uh, was that winter of 2014, 2015, uh, about, uh, what, eight, eight years ago at this point. All right, our next weather maker is getting organized across the middle of the country with snows on the backside, a severe weather threat blooming this evening on the warm side of that system. In fact, uh, elevated severe weather risk for the rest of today and into tonight from uh, Memphis to Little Rock, heading down towards Shreveport and even as far west as Dallas. And then tomorrow, this risk shifts to the east. And so particularly uh, susceptible to severe weather tomorrow, places like Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, Alabama, Nashville, up towards Louisville and Cincinnati. In the yellow area, that's the slight risk of severe weather, basically a two on that one to five scale. That does extend up to Columbus and about to New Philly and Akron. Uh, it does not quite reach our area anymore. The Storm Prediction Center today, with their midday update, did take far eastern Ohio out of that slight risk and downgraded us a little bit. We still are not going to be able to rule out a heavy gusty storm towards tomorrow evening, but the ingredients just don't look that great. Uh, we've got very minimal instability overhead, and uh, the wind shear, while impressive, is we're not going to be able to take advantage of it all that much. Uh, so when you look at the supercell parameter, kind of a, 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 a parameter that combines instability and wind, wind energy and wind shear aloft, it really does max uh, maximize in southwest Ohio. Uh, then it kind of really lowers quickly as we head towards sunset and into the evening. So as this uh, cold front approaches, it's going to be running into an environment that just isn't quite as favorable as off to our uh, west. So again, we're not going to take this off the table, but we are going to, you know, kind of play it down a little bit. The possibility of a damaging wind gust tomorrow evening is not zero, but it's pretty low. And uh, the window is basically 6 to 10. That's about when our cold front will be pushing eastward out of central Ohio and into the eastern parts of the state. Until that point, it'll be a different day tomorrow. Still not that cold, but cooler than today. And we'll get wet a few times. So one batch of rain arriving before the morning is through. Maybe a few scattered showers then in the afternoon. It's right through, let's back that up, right through here. That, again, our, our model this evening not showing a whole lot, but it's right here that as the cold front pushes through, might there be a broken line of, sh of gusty showers, perhaps some thunder? Yeah, that's possible. But severe weather is looking uh, fairly unlikely. Unfortunately, though, reality check time on Friday. Yes, there's blue on the map. Hey, it's going to snow a little bit on Friday in February. How about that? Uh, it's probably not much more than a flurry or two. Nothing accumulating. But uh, the bigger story, aside from maybe you'll see a few snowflakes Friday, will be the dramatic change from today until Friday. 
Uh, we'll talk about the wind chills momentarily. The clouds hang tough Friday, clear out Friday night, and then should be a sun-filled Saturday with a warm front pushing in. We'll get off to a cold start. It'll be in the teens, but we'll make our way into the 40s in the afternoon. We made it to 70 in some spots this afternoon. Friday afternoon, wind chills in the teens. It's going to feel about 55 degrees cooler Friday afternoon than it did today. All right, we've uh, mentioned, let me take off, let's see if we can take off this, uh, eh, never mind the text on there, I left that on there by mistake, never mind the central base telenius. <laughs> um, what I'm showing you on this uh, graphic, we've been speculating a little bit uh, uh, of late about uh, warming over the North Pole, a sudden stratospheric warming is technically what it's called, and this does look like it is going to happen, and it's going to happen in the next couple of days, in fact. Does that mean it's instantly going to have impacts uh, down here on the ground where we are? No. Usually there's a lag with this, and this could be at least a couple or a few weeks worth of a lag. But basically what happens is uh, we get a, a push of abnormally warm air in the very top of the atmosphere. Over the North Pole, it dislodges the polar vortex. This time it's going to send it across into Asia. That doesn't mean that's where all the cold is going to go, but the upper level, really upper level, polar vortex is going to be uh, punted over on that side of the, of the pole. And with this disruption of the polar vortex, uh, some things can start happening in the next couple weeks. Chunks of cold, pure Arctic air can start to get dislodged from the high alt from the high latitudes, I should say, and come to the south. Now, it remains to be seen if this is going to be more of a thing in Asia or in North America. And if it's in North America, is it going to be in Western North America or Eastern North America or both? Um, everything's kind of on the table, but it does at least look like at this point this week that this SSW, this sudden stratospheric warming, is going to occur. And more than likely, there will be impacts somewhere across the mid-latitudes, uh, particularly as we get into the month of March. On the table, Arctic air invades in March, and March is way colder than February for us. That's on the table. Also on the table, the ridge over the southeastern U.S. is able to fight back some and kind of deflect a lot of the cold more towards western North America, and it's basically a general continuation of the January and February pattern. We don't have much confidence on either solution right now. We're only halfway through February, and I think we'll gain more confidence on those longer range ideas as we see how things kind of transpire over the next week or so up in the very highest of latitudes over the pole. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll do it again tomorrow. We'll have a full update on uh, what to expect tomorrow evening if any storms are out there, and we'll uh, take a look at next week's trends, uh, kind of more in the medium range instead of the longer, longer range on tomorrow evening's Weather for Weather Geeks.